Welcome into a brand new edition of the 06010 ESPN Communications Podcast. I'm your host, Alex Fuse, and we have a very special guest, NFL reporter Sal Palatonio. Sal, thanks so much for joining us on the ESPN Communications Podcast. My first question to you, when did you know you were going to be good at sports reporting? Oh, wow. Wow. Uh... You know, uh, I really had an inclination when they kept me around at ESPN. That's it. That's the bottom line. You know, uh, you don't really get a whole lot of kudos in this business, as you know, Alex. But the bottom line is if they ask you to come back, then they think you're pretty good. So my first deal with ESPN in 1995, I signed in August of 95, was a one-year deal with a one-year option. And, you know, when they picked up the option, I, I I guess that was my signal that I was going to be okay. That's awesome. Yeah, we'll get into your approaching 30 years here at ESPN. We'll touch on that later on in the podcast. But week two, Monday Night Football goes to Philadelphia. You spent most of your sports career covering the Eagles. What can fans expect from that Falcons at the Eagles matchup week two, Monday Night Football on ESPN? Well, Monday Night Football in Philadelphia is always great, but this fact that it is the home opener is going to be huge. Uh, and the fact that Jason Kelsey is going to be on the ESPN set is going to be great. It's going to electrify the crowd. It's going to electrify the community. And they are honoring Nick Foles and the Super Bowl 52 champion Philadelphia Eagles that night. Um, Foles is retiring as an Eagle. He was a Super Bowl 52 MVP. Of course, that was a seminal moment in the history of Philadelphia sports. Jason Kelsey was his center and essential character of that football team for so many years, sort of set the culture and the tone. So having Kelsey in the house, Foles in the house, it's going to be a Philly, Philly thing for sure. Have you had a chance to speak with Jason since he's joined ESPN? I have. Uh, I saw him at Ron Jaworski's uh, 40th annual golf tournament. Jason's so good with the community. And uh, even though he has reached this mega celebrity status, he was at Jaws golf tournament and Jaws donated some money to his scholarship fund, to his uh, foundation. And Kelsey spoke to the crowd and I got a chance to do a little Instagram talk with him welcoming, him, welcoming him to the ESPN family. It was literally, I think, the next day or two days after he had joined the company. So I said, looks like you've joined the dark side. And he laughed. What advice would you give Jason if he consoled you into joining the broadcast industry now at ESPN? Oh, you know, I think the number one thing is that just be yourself because I think that's good enough. You know, he speaks the truth. He speaks it plainly. And to me, that's always been the coin of the realm at ESPN. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, before you got into sports reporting, you did spend time on the political realm. How different are the two covering politics and now sports? Hey, well, I covered politics before there were iPhones, so it's way different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did it for... Uh, almost three years at the Albany Times Union and then uh, almost 10 years at the Philadelphia Inquirer. And it really got me ready to cover sports. You know, it's an NFL season is like a political campaign. You know, you gather, you put together a, a, a strategy. You try to keep that strategy secret from the other organization. And then you have a game on Sunday like an election. And then there's a winner and a loser. You know, I told you before we got started, I'm from Albany, New York, spent a lot of time growing up reading the Albany Times Union. What's one memory that sticks with you working in the capital region? I got thrown out of Mayor Whalen's office once. He had a Saturday press conference. There was a, a shooting in Arbor Hill, and I asked him too many pointed questions about the police department's behavior, and uh, I was escorted out. That's my one of my biggest memories of, of working there. But I had two of the greatest mentors you could possibly have at the Albany Times Union. I was hired by Harry Rosenfeld. And uh, Harry was, of course, 
the city editor at the Washington Post during Watergate, and he became the executive editor of the Albany Times Union, and he hired a guy from Philadelphia Inquirer named Dan Lynch to be his managing editor, and the two of them were just, you know, tough newspaper people and really valued, accurate reporting that had depth. And one day, Harry called me into his office and said he was sending me to East Africa to cover the famine. And I'll never forget it. I said, well, my wife is eight months pregnant. And he said, well, you could leave her home. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, God rest his soul. He was a <laughs> he was a tough newspaper guy, man. What was the best advice you received that that moment in time that has stuck with you throughout your career? Interview everybody. That was the one thing that Harry um, and Dan both tried to incorporate in reporting skills. Talk to everyone. Respect everyone's point of view. Try to find out the truth by, you know, just figuring out what people are thinking. Uh, from a political standpoint. And that's also true in a locker room, too. Um, you know, don't rely on single unnamed sources. Make sure that you check out. If your mother says she loves you, check it out. That's the bottom line. Get get more than one source and talk to everybody that you possibly can. Now, Sal, you are currently in Brazil getting ready to cover the upcoming NFL yes. season. What's your favorite part of this time of year is it just getting the having the excitement of not knowing what's going to happen walk us through how are you approaching this upcoming nfl season yeah it's the power of the new there's no question about it of an nfl season you know you, you we talk about it all year long after the super bowl is over we analyze the game and then the draft comes and free agency comes and we analyze the additions and subtractions and off-season training programs and otas and uh, summer practices, and then training camp comes in preseason. And there's so much unknown, especially in the NFL right now, Alex. It's a one-score league. Last year, you had the highest percentage of one-score games in NFL history. You also had 68 different starting quarterbacks, 68 different players started quarterback, 72 the year before. The league is volatile. There's been a lot of upheaval, 17 new offensive coordinators, 16 new defensive coordinators. The power of the new is what really keeps, I think, people engaged in the NFL and the year-long conversation. And then all of a sudden, it's here. And, uh, you know, you get to see firsthand and witness the changes and whether they worked or didn't work and how they'll have to be adjusted as the season goes on. Next year will be your 30th year here at ESPN. How wow. much has <laughs> NFL coverage changed throughout that time? You've covered Super Bowls throughout your whole time here. Walk us through how much has this changed? Well, we went from the 24-hour news cycle to the news cycle that never stops. And so news is happening all of the time. And you have to be constantly aware of everything all at once. It's like that movie that won the Oscars. Everything all at once is happening. Uh, for all 32 teams. And so it's really one of those things that never stops. And uh, it's so exciting. But I think the number one thing is that you, you really have to focus on what's new. Because if you're not doing that, then somebody else has already beat you to the punch. A good example happened today. Uh, today, the Eagles decided not to travel a middle linebacker that they brought in this offseason, Devin White, as a free agent on a one-year prove-it deal. I thought he had a pretty good uh, training camp, but he was beaten out by N'Kobe Dean, a second-year player from Georgia. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. has also played really well. Zach Bond has played really well, and they left Devin White home. He has an ankle injury. He didn't travel with the team, and his future is uncertain, and so is the – the future of the team at the linebacker position. He was supposed to be a linchpin of what Vic Fangio was going to do defensively. As you know, the defense collapsed for the Eagles last year at the end of the season. Fangio was brought in to fix that. White was supposed to be a big part of it. Now he's not here in Brazil. He's not making the trip. What's going to happen going forward is a big issue. 
Sal, this is my favorite part of any interview I do. It's a fast five quick round. It's five quick questions. We call it the Fuse Five. Just five quick questions. Are you ready? Yes, sir. I'm ready. Fire away. One storyline you're looking forward to most this upcoming NFL season. Aaron Rodgers. Let's not get too crazy about it. It's simple. Aaron Rodgers. Can he lead the Jets to the playoffs? Can he stay healthy and lead them to the playoffs? If you weren't working in sports today, what do you think you would be doing? Driving around with my granddaughters on Saratoga Lake on a boat. Oh, that's a great part of the area as well. You host the NFL matchup. What's your favorite part about hosting that show? You really get to find out what's really going on from an X's and O's standpoint in the National Football League. Jim Moore's famous quote, you don't know what you don't know, is really true. I started out as a reporter in the NFL, and Ron Jaworski put me on the show, and then it really opened my eyes to what I didn't really know. And so it's really been a re-education for me over 23 years. Your go-to karaoke song? Wow, probably Let It Be by John and Paul, George and Ringo. No, that's great. If you could host a podcast with someone you were just texting, who would you choose and why? My daughter, Zoe, she is a lawyer in Hudson, New York. She is a big deal lawyer in Hudson, New York. We were texting this morning. I told her I was here and she's got two grand, two of my granddaughters, two of her daughters are very close to. And I'd love to do a podcast about what she does. She's just a domestic violence lawyer. In upstate New York, she handles just women in distress and children in distress. I'd really like to get into the soul of what she does and how she helps people. Then the last one for you, Sal. Obviously, you've covered the NFL for so uh, such a long time now with ESPN. What is the one moment you'll look back on in the last 30 years that you could say, that's been my favorite moment? Oh, it was without a doubt the parade in Philadelphia, not because I'm an Eagles fan and I'm not. I grew up in New York, but when you live in the Philadelphia areas for as long as I did, people really relied on you. Guy who cuts my lawn, who cuts my hair, who delivers my mail. They want answers to questions and it got so frustrating and disappointing and maddening to them over the years of why the Eagles couldn't win the NFC championship game and then go on and win a Super Bowl. And so when that finally happened, the outpouring of relief, of joy, of a fundamental closing of a chapter that had remained open for over two generations was really, really beautiful to see. That parade, I was there for the Pope. That parade was bigger than the Pope. <laughs> Sal, you're the best. Thanks so much for joining us. I look forward to seeing you on NFL Matchup and across all ESPN platforms and especially Week 2 Falcons at the Eagles. Thanks so much, Sal. Thank you, Alex.